do you have an LS car that maybe you've looped the heater lines on and you find that sometimes on warmer days maybe it's running a little hotter. Let me tell you why even though that's the easy way it's not the best way and how to fix it with this little guy from J-Wire Solutions. So here on my car, I've obviously got the heater core lines looped. Uh, this car used to have heat years ago, but has since then been deleted. And the problem you run into is on the water pump, you've got your hot water coming out on the backside here. That usually goes to your heater core and then is looped around and propped right back in on the front. Now, the other line here, of course, is coming from your radiator. So you're mixing your hot water right back into the system with your cold water. So the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and get this loop line off and we're going to block those plugs. Um, you use a couple taps, I think it's a 3 8 on one side and a half inch on the other, we'll double check it and we'll get that closed off and then our next step is we'll go ahead and get the radiator hose off and show you what that new part from J Racing does in place of the thermostat. Also as you can kind of see there I've already drained the coolant, um, this car had coolant in it over winter and we want to go ahead and put water in it. So just going to go ahead and do a two for one on that. All right, so step one is going to be get these heater hose clamps off. I've got my foldable drain funnel there. If you don't have one of those, highly recommend. Now I have drained the coolant out, so hopefully most of it is gone by now. Um, or drained, I guess, not gone. Uh, so let's see here. those loose. This has been on here for quite a while so <laughs> that one doesn't want to come off but it looks like this other one might so let's pull that one first. There we go. Perfect. Right, I'm gonna grab, grab a pair of pliers to get that off real quick. Wiggle this loose. There we go. Well, maybe. Like I said, this has been on for a while. All right. So there's your loop line. You can buy these at auto so auto stores and a few other places sell it, but. Um, so it looks like at some point I had actually tapped this one, or started to, and then maybe I gave up or something, so. <laughs> now we gotta see if we can get this one out. So that'd be next step. So I've seen some people use like a bolt to kind of put the bolt through and push it out using a socket. Um, a few people suggested maybe using an air hammer, so we're gonna try that method because it's fun. Let's see if we can pull it out the rest of the way. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, air hammer. Easy. Okay, so we went ahead and got both those out. And this side has already been tapped. But let's go ahead and get this upper hose off. Shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully. Let me do that real quick. Okay, regardless of what kind of thermostat housing you have, it should just be two bolts. I've removed those. So let's pop this dude off. Maybe. Maybe not. Got RTV on mine, so let me go ahead and give it a little smack. Okay, there we go. Just hit it with the back of the hammer. Let it finish draining out of there. Okay, so should be able to pull this dude out. Hold on. 
definitely going to clean that up. Pull our thermostat out. I think this is just a 160 or something in there. So, but let me get this wiped off and then we'll compare this to what we got from J Racing. Or J Wire Solutions, sorry. And I'll show you how it works versus this. All right, so again, here is the factory thermostat. You see it's got a spring in here as such. So this keeps pressure on the back side, so it's oriented in the water pump like this, back of the motor, front of the motor. The thermostat is actually in the front here, blocking the cold, or the flow, I guess, or the moment of the water coming from the radiator. And then this piece in the back, obviously keeping the water going into the heater core. So heater, hot water goes past the back side, out the heater core, through, and it comes in here. So you can see once this opens, your cold water coming from the radiator your hot water coming across the back back into there so how does this new part fix that solution so this back piece is always blocked off okay so keeping all of our hot water contained because our outlet we're going to plug and then where hot water will be coming in from the inside over here is also plugged and this is just constantly free, free flowing so the motor will always just be open to the radiator now i do street drive this car but i don't street drive it in the winter and to make sure to get it up to temp before I'm racing it, you know, make sure of our oil's up to temp. So we're gonna use this simple, easy install. I'm gonna snag this off of this guy. Give it a quick, quick wipe. Clean it off. And if I bought the right one, this should fit on here. Just goes around the outside. This is just our seal uh, my hands are all wet well <laughs> you can get this optioned from him with the seal already on it all right one moment okay so there it is with the seal installed and per the instructions we just need to adjust the bottom to the proper length to make sure that we're blocking the back. Now it says, uh, shown with blue area, adjust the nuts on either side of the washer to achieve a desired spacing. Test fit is necessary. Block off doesn't need to be airtight. Rather, ensure the gasket surface doesn't, isn't compromised, thus causing a leak. So, looking at our gasket we had in here before, Looks like we want to bring that dude up a little bit. We'll just use this as a starting. Just kind of eyeballing it. Actually, looks like it needs to come up a bit more. Once I get it close, we'll put it in. Okay, so let me check the fit on that. All right, so we need to go a little bit tighter because since this has a spring, when you put it in there, it actually compresses a little bit. So you'll want to adjust this a little bit tighter than, a little bit shorter than this. Like I said, this actually compresses up some. So let's try that. <clears throat> Just a bit of trial and error. All right, so once you've double checked the depth, you'll want to lock those top two nuts and then put it back in the housing if that's the style you have like mine. I put a little gray RTB because I'm paranoid that it'll leak. And then we'll just go ahead and slide this dude back in the water pump. Um, actually, before that, why don't we go ahead and uh, thread that and get that set up with the caps that I bought. Okay, so I went ahead and ran the taps down on both of these. This one was already done, as you saw before. Um, I can't remember if I attempted to block these off years ago or what, but um, I went ahead and just ran this one down through, clean it up the threads a little bit because I had tape on it before. So the front one, the larger, is I'm pretty sure half inch. Let's not mess up those threads. Um, let's see here. It's probably going to be really hard to read. But yeah, that's a half inch. Um, some people say you need to drill a hole bigger. Other people say it works just fine, as you can see. 
some good threads there. This back one, um, I don't know if the plug was larger or what, but the threads are actually pretty pretty far in here, which is fine because the caps I bought are going to fit in here. Um, but I had to run this down pretty far. And then this is a 3 8 and um, I wasn't sure if I had it far enough out, but let's see if we get this. Hopefully I didn't mess these up years ago. This pump's been on the car for a while. But yeah, so 3 8 And I believe you don't have to drill anything there. Just make sure you know you get all your shavings out of there. I don't know if you guys will be able to see much. Eh, don't have the perfect lighting, but I definitely want to get all the shavings and crap out of it. See, that way it's not floating around in your cooling system. So I'm going to clean this out. Uh, go grab the plugs and we'll plug this up and then we'll get back to putting the thermostat on or lack thereof thermostat bypass I just picked up this 25 piece set just off Amazon but you can get NPT fittings anywhere um, got our half inch here and our 3 8 here so go ahead and put some tape on it Teflon tape and then obviously we'll just use the Allen head and Screw these into the water pump. This one, like I said, is going to go in pretty far. Sorry for the lighting, but get those on there. Put those in. Show what that looks like. Cleaned up. And that should be dry. And get that dude in. Hey, you can see the front plug pretty easily. And actually, you can see the back one. So, for some reason, again, um, that threaded in really far. But I can feel it from the front side here it's good and I can feel this one too so I don't know if all pumps are like that or perhaps I rethread that before but just to reiterate so uh, 3 8 MPT on the back half inch MPT on the front um, I got these this set this die set from this tap set from Harbor Freight it's okay there's probably better options out there honestly I don't know if it cut the best threads but here's to hoping this doesn't leak so let's go ahead and put the thermostat back in, the bypass, get everything hooked up, and start putting water in this dude. Okay, so thermostat, two bolts, easy peasy. This has had some time to dry. So let's see if we can slide this dude back in here. Find my bolts wherever they may be. Up, up here on the cowl. These started by hand and then we'll run them down the rest of the way. Ready herder hose is back on. Plugs. If you don't have one of these containers, um, highly suggest. I don't know why I resumed in so much. But uh, we'll just go ahead and fill this up with water. Let the air bubbles come out. So that's the whole idea behind this. The water is at the highest point. So when air comes out, it automatically fills it with water. Just got some jugs of drinking water. It's what we typically use. So hopefully. Um, Hopefully we don't have any leaks. So let's fill it up and let that get started. And we'll check. So the other thing I'm going to do, uh, along with the drinking water, distilled water, whatever you want to use, is drop in a little bottle of wet <laughs> wetter water. Water wetter. Um, some people think it's, you know, it is what it is, but um, tracks allow, you know, water wetter with water. It's a pretty small amount that's going in, so it's pretty diluted. Um, it's supposed to help with the corrosion, if nothing else. I mean, it does claim that it'll run cooler, but if it helps with the corro corrosion, you know, inhibitor, anything like that, I'm all for it. So let's dump that in.
And per the instructions, uh, let's see here. It says uh, one bottle per automotive cooling system of 12 to 20 quarts. I don't know how much mine takes, but pretty big radiator. So I've already got two gallons of water and a third one about to go in. So it should be good. Let's top her off and let the air bubbles out. There's a few more. Again, great tool. If you don't have one, get one. Amazon, they're like 25 bucks. Well, they're probably like 40 bucks now, but yeah. I got it started. Just letting it warm up. A little more water in the funnel there. Again, that was uh, J Wire Racing. Check them out. Uh, local drag and drive guy. I say local Midwest drag and drive guy. Um, that makes that part. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If there's any questions, ask below in the comments. I'll put a link to, to his part so you can buy it as well. But uh, if you have any questions, ask in there. I'll try to follow up in the comments about anything I see any difference wise. But main reason I'm doing this is one, um, I wanted to do a flush on the water that's in there, and then two, I do have a drag and drive coming up, and with a bigger intercooler, I figured, hey, why not? So I don't need a thermostat, really, with what I do, change it out. So thanks for watching. I got another video right here where we did an upgrade on the alternator for something that you might need if you're running a little more RPM on your LS. So thanks, guys.